welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so grateful to have you here. My name is Stephanie and I love God. This is essentially his channel. This is where he's glorified. And today I'm going to be talking about one of, if not the most important areas of doctrine that we can know as believers, and that is what is salvation? So whether you are someone who is a believer or an unbeliever watching this video and you desire more clarity, I hope that this can explain to you the most amazing part of life and that is the free gift of salvation that is available through Jesus Christ. I'm going to let the Spirit lead on this one as always, but I am going to start off with what is salvation and what is it that we are actually saved from so salvation in itself means deliverance from from harm or evil for a christian the deliverance is from the penalty of sin so that is what we are saved from we are saved from the penalty of sin which is eternal death eternal separation from god and sin in essence is anything that does not conform to god's perfect morality see the thing is we have all sinned we have all fallen short of god's glory and we are all going to come face to face with our maker so when we do if we have not yet received christ god is going to judge us based upon the ten commandments so his law his law reflects perfect morality and so in essence I'm just going to list them here. These are the commandments of God. Now, one thing that I really love to ask people, especially when ministering the gospel, is are you a good person? See, a lot of people generally, and I used to do the same, compare themselves to their own standard and measure themselves up to their own standard of what is good and will say, well, yeah, I, I guess I'm a good person. You know, I, I try to do right by people. Or they compare themselves to someone like Hitler and say, yes, I am a good person. However, what we need to understand is that good by definition is perfect morality and God is so unexplainably holy and righteous. No sin can dwell in his presence and we need to be measuring ourselves up to the standard of God, not our own standard, but the standard of God. And if we were to measure ourselves up to the Ten Commandments, then we need to ask ourselves, have we ever in our life lied have we ever cheated have we ever stolen something have we ever dishonored our parents so raised our voice at them or called them names have we ever um, looked at somebody with lust all of these things if we were to come face to face with God once we die, which everyone is, everyone's going to come face to face with their creator. If God was to judge us on these things, would he find us guilty or not guilty? And everyone will say guilty because as the Bible says, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That is, there is not a single person that is walking this earth that has not committed one of those or all of those sins and so because of this sin it has actually separated us from God because God is so righteous and so holy and because no sin can dwell in his presence our sin alienates us from him so we're now disconnected from God because of our sin and in God's sight there is none good there is none righteous no not one see Jesus Christ is the only one who ever lived and was perfectly sinless and this is the gospel that God the creator 
of the entire universe literally came and stepped in to his own creation. He walked about as a man. God took on human flesh. He had conversations with people, but he also lived a perfectly sinless life and he died. He was crucified under the Roman Empire 2000 years ago. His blood was shed upon that cross. He died, was buried and rose again on the third day. He rose from the grave. That's what makes Jesus so unique is that he not only is the only one to ever claim to be God of all the universe, but he also rose again from the dead. And his blood that was shed upon that cross paid the price for our sin. See, in the ancient days, in the old covenant, the way that God chose to atone for the sins of his people, the commandment and the law that he put in place is that it required a sacrifice of the animal. See, the life of the body is in the blood. The blood is very precious. And so God accepted animal sacrifices as a temporary atonement for sin. So people would sacrifice their animal, their sins would be imputed onto that animal and God would accept that animal as a sacrifice. So the punishment of that person was, it's like life for life, was put upon that animal and that temporarily atoned for the person's sin. It was never a permanent solution. It constantly needed to be done. However, when Jesus Christ came, he is God. So he, had, he is eternal. And so when he died on the cross, his blood made a permanent atonement, atonement for our sin, for all who believe. See, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Like an artist that creates a masterpiece and then steps into his own painting. Likewise, God, the creator of the universe, stepped into his own creation, became part of his own creation to die for us out of his love for us and redeem us back onto himself to shed his blood. So spiritually, all who believe on him will be covered by the blood of Christ and atoned for and given the free gift of eternal life. See, eternal life is only available to those who believe. Everlasting life is only available to those who believe upon the testimony of Jesus Christ. We are saved by faith in the finished work of, on the cross. We are saved by faith in Jesus Christ, despite us not being there to witness the crucifixion and not witness the resurrection. We believe by faith that this, is, this happened. And that Jesus Christ is exactly who he says he is. And we turn away from sin, turn away from wickedness. We, we no longer desire to do those things which are displeasing to God. But we desire an authentic relationship with our maker. An authentic relationship with the true and living God. We turn from our sin and we turn towards God. We desire purity and righteousness and holiness. And if we repent sincerely and we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we have done this sincerely, then God has promised to impute his spirit into us. And if you watched my previous video, that's what it means to be born again. And so now we are given the free gift of eternal life and are adopted into the kingdom of God as a child of God. And so now when God looks at us, he no longer sees a sinner, but he sees a son, he sees a daughter. And we are now able to commune with God, talk to God and hear from God and are led by God. It's such an incredible 
gift. But it is the blood of Christ that has redeemed us. The blood of God that makes a permanent atonement for our sin. Everything in the past was merely a foreshadowing of things to come. It was a schoolmaster, something that was put in place temporarily until Jesus Christ came. Now that Jesus has come, we're in, we are under a new covenant. We are under God's grace. We are not saved by our own works. And that is what makes Christianity exclusive from every other religion, every other belief system that teaches that we can earn our way into heaven, that we can be good enough to get into heaven based upon our own effort or our own righteousness. But that's not true. We need to compare ourselves to the perfect morality of God, to the goodness of God and the expectation to get into heaven. So all of us have fallen short. We have sin to our account and we need that dealt with in order to make it into heaven. And the way that I can put it is picture in a courtroom, court of law, you have a debt that needs to be paid. Someone can actually come in and pay that debt for you and set you free. So if you were to come in front of a judge and you have a huge debt, you can't be forgiven of that debt if you just say, well, you know, I've done all of these good things. I've been such an honorable citizen, uh, or member of society, and I've done all of these good things. I've been involved in charities. I've done all of these good works. The thing is, you still have that debt to your account. So that is essentially an allegory of what takes place in the courts of heaven. We come in and despite all of our good works, which really show the, the law that is written on our hearts and in our conscience, we come before the court of heaven. And we have sinned to our account. Jesus has come in and he's paid the price for us. He has chosen to wipe away all of our sin. And it is only through him that we are made righteous. It is not through our own works. It's not through our own righteousness, but it is through the righteousness of God, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And the thing about God is that originally when he created us, he wanted us to be an object of his love, to express his love towards us, to have a relationship with us, to walk with us as he walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He wanted intimacy with his creation. He loves intimacy with his creation. We were always created to be in fellowship with him, to live for him and to be connected to him. However, it is sin when it entered into the world that separated us from God. And it is when we sin in our former life or before we knew Christ that we were separated from God. And so the only way to be reconnected back to God is through Jesus Christ. He is the only way. There is no other way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And He's the only way to the Father. He's the only way to eternal life. He's the only way to heaven. It's God's will that none perish, but that all come into the knowledge of the truth and are saved. God wants salvation for everybody. He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Oftentimes, the sa Satan has deceived people into believing that God is this tyrannical dictator that has such pleasure in seeing people go to hell. But that is so far from the heart of God. His heart breaks. His heart breaks when he sees his, his creation, whom he knew and needed whilst you were in your mother's womb, whom he created and conceived in his mind before this person was even conceived in the womb. To see that individual spend eternity in separation from him, to die in their sin, it breaks God's heart. But God has chosen to give humanity free will. He has chosen to give everyone free will because love, by definition, has to be freely given. 
If you're in a relationship with someone, what kind of love is it if they're forced to love you? That's not true love. Love is when you choose to give that love. To, you make that choice to love. And that is what God wants. He wants our heart. That's, that's what he wants. He has everything. He's God. Everything belongs to him. But one thing that he has left up to us is that choice to seek him, that choice to love him, and that choice to be reconnected back to him. And the word says, his promise to reveal himself, it says in Jeremiah chapter 29, And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. See, the two greatest commandments that God has left us is to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like unto it, and that's to love our neighbor as ourselves. But we are all going to come face to face with God when we take our last breath, and we never know when that is. We are not promised the fullness of 80 years. We never know when it's going to be our last day. And there is no repentance in the grave. Repent now. Today is the day of salvation. Seek ye the Lord whilst he may be found. Call upon him whilst he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God who will abundantly pardon. See, when we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He removes it our sin from his mind as far as the east is from the west he blots out all of our iniquities and he brings us onto himself he wraps up us up in a robe of righteousness and now calls us his son and daughter that's the love of god it, the love of god was revealed to us in such a beautiful way god would literally die for us than to live for, without us you know the bible is a love story the word of God is a love story of a creator who would rather die for his creation than to live without them. And th there is no one that will ever love you more than your creator. No boyfriend, girlfriend, not even your parents. Nothing and no one can ever love you more than the God who created you. And there's nothing that we've been through that he's not aware of. There's no thought that runs through our mind that he's not aware of there's no sin that is present in our heart that he's not aware of God doesn't say fix yourself and then come to me he says come to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light God wants to take away all the things that are weighing us down, the heaviness and the burden of sin. He wants to redeem us from this path that we're walking, which is darkness. We might think it's light, we might think we're walking in the truth, but we're not. Without God, we are walking in darkness. And it's not until you actually have the Spirit of God dwelling within you that God begins to show you the truth, the truth about who He is, the truth about salvation the truth about this world the truth about the spiritual realm true enlightenment only comes from an authentic relationship with your maker so salvation is important the bible says except you repent you shall all likewise perish christianity is the only religion or I guess belief system that teaches salvation through grace that you cannot earn your way into heaven every other spirituality whether it's Buddhism Hinduism Islam any other religion you can think of teaches that you need to do things to earn your way into heaven only God is good and sin is destructive it is detrimental to us but the only way to understand how to truly walk a life of righteousness and, and holiness and purity is to follow the example of Christ. And so as you, as you receive the free gift of salvation and have the Spirit of God dwelling within you, that's when God can help you and he can begin to show you what it means to 
walk in a way that is pleasing to God and it's for our spiritual protection and to preserve our fellowship with God to keep it pure so you know God doesn't set his commandments in place because he wants to be controlling he does it because every single commandment that is in place is as I said for our spiritual protection and to protect our relationship with God for instance, fornication, having sex outside of marriage. That is spiritually detrimental because there's some, there's a spiritual exchange that happens when you fornicate. You transfer spirits. You create soul ties. You are now affected by that encounter spiritually. The spiritual realm is far more real than the physical one. And we each have a soul. We each have a spirit. There is a false teaching that is infiltrating mainstream society and that is this atheistic worldview that is preached in most schools that we are born and then we die and whatever we decide to do in between is up to us, but that is it. Whereas we know instinctively that there's more to life than just we live, we die. We know that there's something beyond this life and there is. This life that we're living now is a fraction of our soul's existence. It is a blink and a twinkling of an eye. It is like a cloud here one moment and gone the next. It is like a vapor, it's a vanishing mist. It's so temporary and nothing that we gain in this world is coming with us to eternity. Only our soul, the question is, If you die in your sin without Christ, you will be eternally separated from God. There is weeping and gnashing of teeth in hell. It is a, God will never force someone to heaven against, his, against their will. If we choose to reject Christ in this life, then why should we spend eternity with him? The most important choice is seeking God and surrendering your life to him. Will you accept the gospel or will you reject it? Will you accept the free gift of eternal life or will you reject it? Will you choose to be redeemed by the grace of God through his blood or will you re reject that and live according to your own wisdom and desires? It's incredibly important to be wise and to seek those questions, to seek the answers to those questions that have eternal value. What is your purpose? What is the meaning to life? Who does your eternity belong to? All of those answers are found in God. Salvation is the most important thing that you can receive in your life. God wants you to be eternity with Him. There is peace and there's love and there's joy and you're always in the presence of God. There's no more suffering in heaven. It is an incredible place to be, but the only way to get there is through Jesus Christ and through the grace of God that was expressed towards us, the love of God that was shown towards us. So repent and believe the gospel and God, who is full of love and mercy and forgiveness, will forgive you, will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. and you will enter into eternity with him and I, I hope, I hope to see you there. So, I love you all. I hope that this was able to explain salvation to you. If you have any more questions, email me, comments, whatever it takes. I, I think this is the most fundamental doctrine of Christianity is salvation. And I encourage everyone to pursue a relationship with God. Once you repent, once you receive the gift of salvation, continue to seek the Lord. I love you all and I hope that you have a beautiful day. Bye.